Hey, Ryan. Yes? So I overheard an interesting conversation this morning in the neighborhood. And what was that conversation? So there was a mom out there walking her dog along with her two little kids, and two girls. And they go, hey, mom, where's daddy? Why isn't he coming on the walk? And the mom says, well, daddy needs to sit alone in a room for a while and reflect upon his life choices. What did daddy do? We may never know. Welcome to Donna Shannon's Coyote Tales. My name is Donna Shannon, and with me today, my special guest is Ryan Shannon. Also known as the Grumpy Hulk. And I just want to say this in advance. The statement of Ryan Shannon does not represent the opinions of Donna Shannon's Coyote Tales. It might. It might, but I you know, just don't want people bitching at you for what I say. Right, exactly. And it's a good thing that you said that because our mind topic today is something that I often discuss with people at length, and that is, well, that pissed me off. And I'm mad. I'm mad as hell. Yeah. I'm not going to take it anymore. Damn right. But before we get into that, uh, for our loyal listeners, you might have noticed there was a little tiny gap between this and our last podcast because we had the infinite pleasure and got on the bandwagon with this ever popular trend of catching COVID. Yes, we both had, I had COVID first and therefore I wanted to share with Donna. Yes, because that's what we do as a married couple. We share everything. Oh, including germs. Including lots of germs. Yes. So, yeah, that was like July 2022. And we're now in August. So, no, we weren't sick for a full month. But, you know, all the rest of life and trying to catch up with things and put us where we're at today. Yeah, taking two weeks off really sucked. Well, you didn't take two weeks no, off. No, I worked like an idiot. I am. That oh. made Donna mad. It did. It did. Because you, hey, by the way, important life tip. If you're sick with something nasty and it's just bringing you down and you can't even think and all you want to do is sleep, do not work. Go sleep. That's what I did. I just like checked out. I'm like, uh uh, not doing this. And it just like, I slept like probably 20 hours a day. It was insane. And yes, I worked. But you didn't work too hard. No, I didn't work hard at all. Yeah, so so tell us about your work ethic during this time, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, the work, work ethic at this time was I would log on to the phones, log on, answer a few emails. Working from home. Working from home, of course. I'd go sit in my recliner, put, put the blanket on, and take a nap. And a phone would ring, so I'd stumble over there, pick up the phone, Answer, transfer the call, answer an email, go back over to my recliner and sleep some more. By the way, behavior like that is why many companies are now doing something that is pissing off many people. Do you know what it is? I have no clue what it is. Monitoring. They can monitor me all they want to. <laughs> yeah, so the this is like a big trend right now that... Companies for their remote employees are putting monitors and I, you know, spam bots and, and crap like that on their computers to make sure that they're actually working during working hours and not doing things like sleeping or writing a novel or working a second job or watching porn or what or, you know, whatever the case may be. Or reading. We have people at work that actually have their books in the office for reading. Well, you watch movies. Yeah, but that's different because I can watch a movie and, and still work. It's like listening to music. When I listen to music, you can still work. Well, if they're not getting a phone call and they're reading a book, they can put a bookmark in. True, true. So I guess it's the same thing. Right. But there's actually now like life hack technology that's coming out to protect you, the worker, from being spied on or how to circumvent these things. Like, I think my favorite one right now, it's a little attachment you put on your mouse. It's a mouse jiggler. 
<laughs> Which sounds pornographic, but it's not. It like literally takes your mouse and it moves it back and forth every now and then. So you can be like off doing whatever you want to do. And it looks like you're working because the mouse is moving and it and it logs the movement. But don't they track your keyboard touches? I get, I, yeah, that's another one that they can do. Um, and they can also be like, hey, it, it's a little bit of a stupid hack because just because the mouse is moving doesn't mean you're clicking on anything. That's Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. you got to click and touch your keyboards. I mean, at least when I'm watching a movie, my keyboard is, and computer is right in front of me. Yeah. It's not like I'm... Uh, never mind. Not, okay. gonna, not gonna go there. Okay, so here's the thing that that gives me an idea. It's like, all right, what you should do is invent like a robot that's going to like type answers and stuff to where anything that comes up, move your mouse and click on it, and then you get paid the paycheck from the robot. Well, just you know what? I can't think of that stupid bird, but it's the one that that fills oh, yeah. up and it pecks, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's always hitting in her. It's always hitting in her. You know, Homer Simpson did that. That's where I got it from. <laughs> Thank you, Simpsons. Don't sue us. <laughs> yeah, it did cause, like, a nuclear emergency, <laughs> though. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, all right. There is a couple of problems with this idea, though. Okay, what's problem number one? Okay, problem number one is if you invent a robot that's smart enough to do your job for you... Why would the company need to pay you anything at all? They can just buy a shit ton of your robots, and then now nobody has that job. That's true, yeah. It's called Terminator. Yeah. That's the other side that's of the, the problem. Next, that's the next. Cyberdyne Systems, Model T-800's coming to kill you. Right, right. Because if we've got the robots intelligent enough to do the customer service now especially if they're in customer service, it really is going to be a very short amount of time before they determine, <laughs> yeah, hey, baby, you want to kill Tell all humans? humans? Thank you for Uturama. <laughs> <laughs> especially if they're in customer service, right? Oh, especially if they're in customer service. Yeah, that, that pretty much seals our fate. Yeah, yeah, we're screwed. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, that's the joys of COVID and kind of some life hacks for your job. And COVID did wipe, wipe us out pretty much. It, we didn't go to the hospital, thank God, but it it was horrible. I probably should have. I, I should have called the doctors at least. But Ryan called the doctor. And so, of course, they, you know he had pretty typical symptoms. And they were just like, eh, no, fuck no, we don't want to see you. you. Keep doing what you're doing. Just keep drinking fluids, flu zinc fluids and all that stuff. Tylenol, junk like that. Yeah. But... Fuck no. Keep you and your germ bag away from us. Do and not. I was okay with that. Yeah. But me, I was having problems with like, Ryan's sister got us a, a pulse ox, so it measures your pulse rate and your oxygen. And mine can, so when she drops it off, and by the way, the family was very nice. They just would like put things on our porch and run away <laughs> and then call from the street. Your stuff is on the porch. You know, because they wouldn't, of course, get anywhere close to us. But uh, she's like, okay, if your oxygen level goes below 85%, and of course she's saying, if Ryan's oxygen level <laughs> goes, below, goes below 85%, take him to the hospital. And I'm like, well, what about me? It's like, well, fuck you, Donna. Who cares? <laughs> it's not what she meant. I know, but it was still kind of funny. It was funny. <laughs> and so I'm like, I would just lay there. Trying to watch TV and too much brain fog to really follow what was going on. And I would just be there panting because they have the asthma thing going on. And uh, I put the pulse ox on. I'm not doing anything, right? I'm not like running in place or shit like that. And my oxygen would be like 89, 88. I'm like, well, I haven't hit 85 yet. 85 is the magic number. Yeah, and then, but my pulse rate was like 125, which is like really high. That's very high for you. That's really high for anybody. <laughs> well, yeah. Especially if all you're doing is like sitting in a recliner 
And you're not doing shit. Sleeping, trying to watch a decent TV show. Oh, yeah. And it's like my heart would just be pounding away. Like, to the point you could, like, see my chest shake. My boobs were jiggling. My heart was beating so hard. My numbers were 90s and, and Pulse was 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. And so, anyways. So, they told Ryan, eh, you're fine. You I was all like, I'm, I'm not going to call. And I just don't want to deal with that. And then I sure as shit just didn't want to deal with like an emergency room or anything like that. That would have been a cluster. Yeah, just awful. Didn't want to go there, you know. When there's a zombie apocalypse but going on, the last place you want to go is the hospital, correct? Correct. Second to last place is the police station. Why the police? Because if they can't get to the hospital, they're going to go to the police, and the police have way more guns than the hospital does. That's true. There are very few guns at the hospital. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and don't go to a mall either. You know, the movies say go to the mall, but make sure it's one in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Then the other problem with that is malls are now open-air design in Colorado, so that is wouldn't help you out at all. Nope. Wouldn't help you out at all. Yeah, and there's no food inside Macy's. Nope, go north to Alaska. No, you could go to Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet they, as meatballs. They got the meatballs and no windows to the outside. Don't They don't have windows? No, they don't. Holy shit. Yeah, so Ikea is set up like a trap. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like maybe some windows up in front, but it's like walking into a strip club. They don't want you to realize how much time you're spending in there. That's why there's no windows in strip clubs. It's not so people can't like walk by and see the boobies. It's so that you inside the club have no idea how much time has passed. I never knew that. God, I learned something new today. There you go. And then IKEA. They make you walk like a path through the store. You can't just like cut through shit. So the ideal is that you get on this path and it makes you meander through. And you're like, I really need some bookcases today. Uh Uh-oh, I had to walk by all these knickknacks and bedrooms. And you know what? We do need new bunk beds. And all the rest of that. Besides, if you go to Ikea in the zombie apocalypse, you've got building materials. And you could just modify all these designs to be whatever you need. Wow, I'm, I'm a man. I never thought of IKEA. Yeah, and it's big, so you could be in there with like a group of a collaborative group of people, and it's like, all right, you you take over bedding. Uh, she's gonna take over the living room space. It's like the, the places are massive, so. But you can't grow food. You can. All you have to do is repurpose some bookcases, get some dirt, planters. Wow. Okay. Go to IKEA. Now you can go to IKEA. And nobody else would have thought about it. Nope. We'd be safe. Yep. (laughs) Because you know why everybody else is thinking about Ikea? Well, that pissed me off. Because it's all that shit furniture they couldn't figure out how to assemble. That's why I've never been to Ikea, nor am I ever going to Ikea, unless it's a zombie apocalypse. Yep, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Yo, Joe. Yep. All right, so speaking of things that piss you off... This is going to be a new segment of our show because uh, there's plenty of things out there in the world that piss me off and I just need to vent for a little bit. So I'm going to, and the whole inspiration for this thing was there was like this judgment came through from the U.S. Supreme Court, very unpopular, back in June. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the whole like abortion rights thing. I don't want to get into that at all. Even the whole situation pissed me off and pissed off a lot of other people. Not going there because this is not a political commentary show. Thank God that would piss me off if this became a political show. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) It might accidentally happen. Yeah. (laughs) Accidental politics. Isn't that how Trump got involved? It just... (laughs) I'm not going there. <laughs> oh. the opinions of some don't represent the opinions of others. Yeah, so anyways. But uh, here's one of the things that pisses me off 
utmost in the world, and I will bitch out strangers for it. And she has. And I have. And that is people who use the handicap stalls at the bathroom. And you're like, well, what? And here's the reason why. My mom has, you know, cognitive impairments. She's got mobility issues. She's got AFib. She uses a walker and all the rest of this. So anytime I take her out, you know, whether going to the doctors or something else, like a restaurant or whatever, you know, she has issues. And anytime we go to the bathroom, it's going to take some time. Right, because she, I have to help her out. You know, Ryan's seen this where we went to like Olive Garden, and it's like fifteen minutes. Where the hell did Donna go? Did she leave me? Yeah, because I was in the bathroom trying to help my mom. And if I walk into a bathroom, and somebody who's not handicapped walks out of that fucking stall, damn, do I lay into them. So, case in point, the last time we took mom to the movies. You know, I'll, also, I have to make sure that she goes, you know, it's just like dealing with a kid, right? Hit the bathroom before we go in. Oh, we need to hit the bathroom on the way out, right? Right. So we're at the big Google Plex of movies and going in and mom goes towards the back. This is the big bathroom at the theater so there's probably like 20 stalls in there or something so there's like four handicapped bathrooms so yeah i get in and take care of my business mom's in her stall she takes care of her there is nobody waiting in the bathroom at all everything is empty me and mom are the only ones in there okay and then this fucking karen walks in with her little kid and i don't mean like little little kid i mean like 11 or 12 year old kid and so they're walking in through the bathrooms, and the mom says to this parent in training, oh, so which bathroom stall do you want to use? Do you want to use a regular one, or would you like to use the extra big one? Well, uh, I mean, mom's probably a fat ass. No, no, total Karen, messy bun, yoga mom, you know, literal Karen here. And I'm like, what the fuck? 20 empty bathrooms and she's encouraging her kid to take the big bathroom and I'm like pissed so mom comes walking out the mom and the kid come out of their stalls and the mom looks at my mom the Karen mom looks at me and mom and it's all like has a little surprised look on her face and I look at this Karen and I get right in her face I go yeah imagine that sometimes Handicapped people need to use the handicapped restrooms. And she's all like, whoa, because nothing to say. Didn't say shit to me. She didn't have any right to say shit. Yeah, she's training her kid to, like, take the best bathroom for yourself. It's not here as a luxury item for you, you fucking you cunt. Excuse me. Pissing me off. Because I have had times where mom and I are in smaller bathrooms and she's standing there waiting to get into the handicap to have somebody who's fully able walk out. And in the meantime, she has lost control. And we have to, like, I have to bring extra pairs of clothes. You know, she's got incontinence issues here. This is a real deal problem. So now, instead of just making sure she's getting on and off the toilet, now I have to change the clothes, change the depends, get her situated again, and all the rest of this. And damn, hell, yes, we need the large bathroom, not just for her walker, not just to maneuver around, but so I can go in and help her change her clothes. It makes perfect sense. It's just some people are fucking rude. Yeah, so this is why that pisses me off. Yeah. But then, same movie, same day, same issue. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming out of the movies now. And we're back into the outer reaches of the movies because you know, we're at like one of the theaters and the smaller theaters in the back and stuff like that. So this time we go into the women's room. There's probably 10 stalls here. Problem is there's only two handicapped bathrooms and one is not operating. Of course. Of course. It's broken. 
So there's really only one. And, you know, I, of course, I had a giant soda, so I'm all like, Mom's standing there waiting for the bathroom. The one handicap The spot. one handicapped spot, because there's somebody in it, of course. And I run into the bathroom, take care of my stuff. I come out. Mom is still standing there. And I start quipping off. I'm just, like, loud talking to Mom, going, Do you know what? I sure hope that there's a handicapped person in that bathroom. Because if there is not, and you've been standing here waiting all this time, I'm just like, this is so inappropriate, and all the rest of this. And I'm just like, going off. Because she stood there for like five minutes. And then guess who comes walking out of the bathroom? A Karen. I don't know if they were a Karen or not, but their legs worked just fine. No palsy. No walkers, no canes, I don't know, not even mentally handicapped, because I could tell from the way her face was cringing that she was so embarrassed that somebody with an actual handicap was standing there waiting for the one restroom she could use. And if you're thinking maybe I should have walked all the way down the hall to go to the other bathroom... My mom walks really slow with that walker, and that's like a 10-minute walk. Yeah, she would have already, already gone to the bathroom at that point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You actually heard that woman when she came out of the bathroom, too. Yeah, she was a little freaking out. Yeah. She was freaking out a lot, actually. Which makes me feel good, because when I came out and Ryan's all like, oh, yeah, that woman... I, not... Okay... Not only was she freaking out, all the people in the hallway were freaking <laughs> out because they heard me, oh, right? Yes, yes, everybody. The guy that was standing next to me, was, was his jaw hit the floor. He was, ah, 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 I got nothing. Yeah, yeah, because it was like one of those, you know, convoluted open hallway door kind of things that back into the bathroom. Right, and it was, it was, yeah, she was young and she should have used a regular stall. Yeah. And so when she came out, apparently when Ryan saw her, she was all embarrassed and talking to her companion. I was like, oh, man, there was like this woman waiting for the handicapped stall. And I didn't know. And Yeah, well, don't use it in the first place. Yeah. It's not there as a luxury item for you. It's not the luxury suite for Karens. Right. And, uh, yeah. So, don't be an asshole, people. Please don't use a handicapped stall if you don't need it. Because if I run across you, and I see you doing that shit for no goddamn reason, I am totally going to get in your face. I would too. Yeah. So, that's something that pisses me off. So, there you go. Public service announcement for today. How about you, Ryan? What is something that pisses you off? I'm going to... It's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, mine is traffic and... The way people don't know how to drive in this state. Yeah. A, a merge lane is to speed up so you can merge into traffic. What? A merge lane is so that you can speed your car to the, the speed of the highway and merge over. Oh, that's a mind blower. And fucking you, oldie but good, use your fucking turn signals. What? They're right there on your car. They're, you know, to flinger fit. It's not that fucking hard to use your goddamn turn signals. Yeah. Oh, another thing. If I'm merging on the lane and no one's in the left lane and you're uh, there's another car coming up, I have the courtesy to get over in the left lane until I get on the highway. Yeah. That's not that difficult. Yep. People are just inconsiderate because it's all about me, me, me. You know, me, me, me. Fuck yourself. <laughs> Oh, and then if you're going to cut me off, make sure you don't flip me off because I'm the one that slowed down to let you in, but you cut me off. Mm -hmm. So don't get pissed off on my driving habits. I'm actually a pretty decent driver. He's an excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> so, yeah, and trucks. You know, truckers, 18 wheelers, driving in the left lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Don't. But I can understand the 18 wheelers because if the 18 wheelers went on strike, we'd be fucked. Yeah. I think it was in Brazil, the truck drivers went on strike and it took them seven days to resolve because there was no food, 
no water purification, nothing was running, and the town basically shut down. Mm, yeah. Based off the zombie apocalypse. Yep, yep. Truckers play an essential role. A huge true. role. And not a lot of people, a lot of the older truckers are retiring. And yep. people aren't taking those jobs because it's a hard job. Yep. So if you're complaining about some plain chain ma- management to the poor retail worker who's just trying to satisfy you and they just don't have any shit. It's because there was no truckers to bring them shit. You're right. Yeah, we're correct. The truckers are doing the best they can. Yeah. It's like the Sonic we saw at uh, Salida in Colorado, oh, yeah. which is yeah. a small town up in the mountains, if you don't know that. So we tried to go to Sonic just to get dessert or whatever. And their truck, their shipping truck had not arrived that day. So they had a sign on their poor... Oh, I felt so bad for these people. It was bad. Yeah, they're like, we have no buns, lettuce... Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Cheese. Cheese. It was a whole... It was a whole... You couldn't make a hamburger at Sonic. Yeah. That says a lot when you can't make a hamburger out of a hamburger place. Yeah. Yeah. And while we're there getting on our ice cream, which was operational, thank God, uh, of course, because ice cream is important to fat people... Amen. Yeah, us being the fat people. No judgment to other fats out there. <laughs> no fat shaming. But while we're sitting there, somebody uh, comes running up out of the... They parked, and they're bringing in boxes from Costco. Because the manager had to go to Costco to buy supplies because they had nothing. Right. It was, that was pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, I felt bad for the person inside Sonic, too. She, she was the only one left. Because all the rest of the staff had to go to Costco. <laughs> well, I was okay with that. I mean, I, I understand. I worked customer service for years. I understand that sometimes it is difficult job. Mm-hmm. And I give those people a break. Because mm-hmm. God knows, I think every I think everybody in their life should work at a restaurant. Or, or, or do some type of customer service because... Then you would see it from their point of view. Yeah, or retail. Or retail, agree, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of traffic, kind of getting back on that. So, this happened to me the other day as I was driving back from the doctor's office, the one way, way up north. Right. So, there's this gigantic Lincoln Navigator, just massive vehicle, right? And these people are... Uh, they had already pulled up into the continuous lane on the right hand side and then they were coming over into my lane and they didn't bother to look so they almost smashed into me and then I'm like Jesus and then I look up and they have a gigantic Jesus fish on the back of their car (laughs) (laughs) Jesus oh look there he is Jesus Jesus I'm not even going to get into the Jesus fish (laughs) <laughs> I'm not that's my opinion does not matter about the Jesus fish. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you can you enjoy all your Jesus fish, but we're we are not a part of the Jesus fish clan. Well it's funny, people with the Jesus fish tend to be the worst drivers. Did I say it? you're gonna have to delete that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say anything racist, you just said they're bad drivers. They are bad drivers. You know why? It's that country song, Jesus, Take the Wheel. Shit goes bad. They're like, Jesus, take the, take wheel. the wheel. And they let go, and they close their eyes and pray. Isn't that what that song means? I don't know. I don't think I've <laughs> ever heard that. Is it country? I've never yeah, heard that. Yeah, it's a country song. song. Oh, I don't it's, listen to country. Yeah, it's a country song. <laughs> I have heard Dead Skunk in the Middle of the Road, but that's a different song. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's very different. <laughs> so that's it, the whole premise of the Jesus Take the Wheel song is like I believe it's been a long time since I've heard it but this gal's getting into a car accident so she closes her eyes and takes let's go the wheel and prays Jesus takes the wheel and then you know God protected her and all the rest of this so she didn't die as she was spinning out on ice or whatever the fuck was going on and then she just applied that strategy to the rest of her life anytime things are going bad Jesus take the wheel 
Can I do that at work from now on? Sure. Jesus, take the order. Jesus, take the phone call. Yeah. Jesus, why are you getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> are we getting back into our sentient bro- customer service I robot? Think, I, it's called Jesus, the sentient robot. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I didn't say that. That was Donna. That was not me at all. That was all Donna. No, because Jesus, when often assigned to people, is Jesus. As a name. Is it? Yeah, it's not a racist thing. Okay, just want to make sure it wasn't a racist thing. Yeah, because you know why? It's a little weird. You send your kid to school, and they're like, what's your name, Jesus? What, like God? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that pisses you off? No, that, I think I'm going to save all the other things that piss me off for the next show. Is this a, going to be like a recurring theme from now on? And there's a lot of shit that pisses me off. I know. That's why we ever got material for days and days and days. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. So, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the flip flop. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Donna Shannon's Coyote Tales is a production of Coyote Visions Productions and is hosted by Donna Shannon. Ugh, nothing redundant about that. Theme music is Coyote Strut by James Nay. All other music is ethically sourced and licensed from SoundDogs.com and EpidemicSound.com. And we paid for it, I swear. We can provide receipts if necessary. All the stories you've heard are true. Only the names, events, and facts have been changed for our own amusement. In the immortal words of Obi-Wan, so what I told you was true from a certain point of view. Find all of Donna Shannon's website and social media links at Linktree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot double E slash Donna Shannon. Follow us and find out all about upcoming shows and live performances. Now go out there, enjoy life, and grab some tales of your own.